Okay, so we are continuing our discussions. Actually, this is our final lecture, lecture number 42 of our course. So last time we have started, actually we have ended the discussion for the autocorrelation of in-phase and the quadrature phase components of the Lopez equivalent of a bandpass process. Actually, this is a very long statement. So these are the autocorrelations of in-phase, let me write IQ for simplicity, IQ components of, there is a noise process, so this is the Lopez equivalent of, there is a white sand stationary bandpass process. So as you see, there is lots of history behind this. So if I check this, there is a parameter Fc. One more time, this is what we call representation frequency. Sometimes we call it carrier frequency. But in our calculations, it's something like an abstract quantity. It doesn't have to be carrier frequency. Carrier frequency means that that is the carrier uh, the modulation carrier. So for our purposes, this is just a quantity that we use to generate this low pass equivalent. Okay, but what are we doing? Let's remember, what we are doing is, it's very specific to communications. So what do I mean by communications? Assume that you are transmitting a signal, okay, from point A to point B. So you are choosing a wireless communication medium, let's say, okay, so for the propagation of the signal in the wireless communication medium, maybe this is radio matter, you are, you, you are occupying a bandwidth, okay, this is your message, in spectrum, F, okay. So this is your deterministic message. So it is centered around a frequency F naught. It may have a different shape, it may not be symmetric, etc. So for our purposes, we are only interested in this part of the spectrum. So this part is the message of radio metal, let's say. Maybe they are playing a song, etc. and etc. So for our purposes, the rest of the spectrum, outer bands, except this other than this bandwidth, they are not important for our purposes. So what we have seen, this is what's called a bandpass deterministic bandpass signal. So we have done the following. We have generated the analytic signal first. If this has, let's say, amplitude A, remember, analytic signal is, in this part, it's 2A, okay? And the rest is all zero. This is called the analytic signal spectrum. It's all zero. It's the same bandwidth. Everything is the same. So I am nulling this negative frequencies. I am multiplying the positive frequencies by 2 because of this process. So, in different textbooks actually, this, there can be like scaling for the generation of analytic signal. There can be multiplications by 1 over 2, square root of 2, etc. But ours is the most basic one. Okay. For the analytic signal, we have this. So this is step number one. So step number two is, this is not low pass. Now we modulate it. We select the carrier frequency. Let me select this carrier frequency also as F naught, the symmetry center then it becomes demodulated to the zero frequency and this is what we have Lopez equivalent process spectrum. Okay, This is what we are trying to achieve. This again 2A, this is again this bandwidth, etc. So this is for the deterministic signals. Now how about the case when we have random processes? So why are we dealing with random processes? Well. Again, this is radio metal, but in this spectrum, maybe there is some noise, okay? Maybe this is white noise, maybe there is some other, let's say, turning on, uh, let's say some other communication systems are occupying that bandwidth. Maybe there is a pi pirate radio station also occupying this, etc. There can be so many other things, okay? So those are not deterministic, and we would like to understand them somehow. And not in this course, but we would like to deal with this noise effects, interference effects, jamming effects, etc using the statistical properties of what we say, this will be the bandpass noise of this noise. So, 
Now I'm assuming that n of t, I'm trying to approach this. n of t is white sand stationary band pass noise. Okay? We have spent several lecture le lectures on being white sand stationary, etc. So now I'm focused on the power spectral density of this. So the noise power spectral density. Let's say that it is in this form for our purposes. Okay, it's again occupying a bandwidth. Let's say this starts from F1, goes to F2. Okay, then this is minus F1, minus F2. So this is the power spectral density of a random process. And as you see again, this is limited to essentially to this bandwidth. So this is a real valued process, obviously, because this is the process that your antenna, let's say, records or, or your antenna receives. So your ant antenna is a linear, let's say, system. It's receiving this radio Matthews message and some noise. Okay? So this noise in the same bandwidth has a power spectral density of like this ramp function, something like that. Okay? Now, I want to do the same thing for this and deal with this in terms of low pass equivalence. Again, step number one. We have spent some time on this. So this will be analytic process this time. It's exactly the same. So how nice that our theory, let me call this for change B. This will be 2B. Okay. It's the same bandwidth, F1, F2, etc. This is zero. So again, the negative frequency parts are nulled and we are retaining this bandwidth. Now in step number two, again, this is modulated to this low pass process. And you can say that, okay, there is no difference. Well, I should select the carrier frequency. Well, let me select this carrier frequency as the mid part. Okay. Then This is 2B, this is B, so this is then F1 minus FC, this part is F2 minus FC, so I shift everything, so FC becomes zero, and so on. Okay. So this becomes, as you see, the same bandwidth over here. So at the end, what we are doing is, if this is radio meta operation, its carrier frequency or center frequency is 100 and 3.1 megahertz, do you remember? 103.1 megahertz, but the message is maybe 0 0.2 megahertz, okay? So what's the quality factor? Do you remember the quality factor definition? Center frequency divided by bandwidth, okay? So let's say 100 divided by 0 0.2, 500, okay? So you can say, okay, this is indeed a very, very narrow band message. So, so quality factor is 500, that means that I am dealing with a very narrow bandwidth message, but at a very high carrier frequency. Of course, for all practical purposes, I want to deal with low frequency messages or low frequency signals, because as you can imagine, this signal, bandpass signal, is making 100 million oscillations per second. By, but my message is making 0 0.2 million oscillations per second, let's say 200 kilohertz bandwidth over here. So it's much easier to handle this. For example, in your circuit laboratory, you had equipment for this. If you are dealing with messages around, let's say, less than one megahertz, you can deal with them according to the circuit, you know, equipments and so on. You can use your workbench. But if you are dealing with messages over 100 megahertz, this becomes RF, a topic of RF, okay? So this is the region in telecommunic, this is called telecommunication engineering. You demodulate the signal to its low pass, but equivalent signal. So similarly, in the spectrum, if you have some noise, you can also demodulate it to the coolant low pass noise. Okay? Now I can construct my circuits, RLC circuits, maybe I can sample this, etc., with a low sampling rate, and I can do processing. So the processing of communications actually starts from this part, digital communications, let's say. So digital communication is trying to extract this message by getting rid of this as much as possible, this noise effects. So still, how about this? NI NQ. Well, so this is an low pass 
Now this low pass random process. Well, last lecture we have spent maybe two lectures. We have spent time, we have seen that if this is white sand stationary, this is also white sand stationary, this is also white sand stationary. That is the reason that we have power spectral densities and so on. But so this is white sand stationary and its power spectral density is over there. But this is complex valued. How can I say so? Because you see that its power spectral density is not you know, even function. Its inverse Fourier transform will be the autocorrelation function and autocorrelation function will be complex valued. Okay? So this, for example, inverse Fourier transform of this, this magnitude spectrum, it will be an even function. Okay. It, it will be a real function since this is an even function. But this one, it will be a complex valued function. In any way, all low pass equivalents are complex valued. So this is called in phase and quadrature phase components. Okay. Again, last lecture, we have seen that these are also white sand stationary. How nice. So our theory of white sand stationary processes extends by, let's say, good mathematics, <laughs> because we are modulating by exponential function, complex exponentials, by using properties of cosines and sines. We are getting, again, white sand stationary processes. And if I focused on this process, OK, so at the end, this process is nothing but, this is step number, you may say, 3. OK. I start from this N of T process, do this, do that, then take its real part. Okay. Then that process has an, we have seen autocorrelation like this. So as you see, this is only function of tau. This is the reason that last lecture we have said this is indeed y sense stationary. Because it's autocorrelation, N I autocorrelation, there is no T on the right hand side. So it does not depend on time, it depends on single variable called to lag variable. So n i and n q, they are identical according to this. I have that. But their cross correlation, this, exists. They are not equal. They are negatives of each other. n i, n q cross correlation and n q, n i cross correlation. Because these are two different functions. Well. I can write over here, if you wish, ni and ni. In some texts, it is written like that. So first indices, first function, second indices, second function. If both of them are the same, it becomes autocorrelation. But we don't write this in order to, let's say, use less ink. So ni, nq, and nq, ni, they are different functions. But these different functions are related, in our case, with a minus sign. They are negatives of each other. Okay, so today, let's start. Let me use this. Today, we will derive the power spectral density of Ni and Q processes and Cross power spectral density. Actually, this will be a very easy cross power spectral density of again Ni and NQ of T. Well, since we have the autocorrelations, our task is a simple task. So let's say calculation of. S and I of F. Okay. So how can I do this? Well, S and I of F. Apply the definition. This is the Fourier transform of R and I of tau. Okay. So I should take the Fourier transform of this. So how can I take the Fourier? Well. I will use, I don't want to write this again. I will use this equation star. So from this star, how can I write that? So this is function one, function two, multiplied. Function, function one's Fourier transform 
S n of f convoluted function two's Fourier transform. Okay. Delta f minus f c delta f plus f c. Do you agree? This is called the multiplication property. So I'm transferring from tau variable to the f variable. Okay, Fourier transform of this, it's called power spectral density of the band pass process. This, this is actually it. And the Fourier transform of cosine is two impulses. That is it. Plus, Fourier transform of this. So what is that one? Let me mark this a little better. This is R n of tau. Okay. So that is the Hilbert transform of R n of tau. Well, as you may remember, it was very important to use Hilbert transforms to get the analytic signals. So this is equal to Hilbert transform multipli multiplies by this times S n of f convolution width. Now for your transform of, I have sign. F plus Fc. Okay. So I have to, this is the end actually. Now, what should I do? Let's try to organize this a little. I have 1 over 2 over here. Well, J's cancel. It is good that J's cancel because this is supposed to be a real value, isn't it? It's a power spectral density. I shouldn't be seeing any complex numbers over here. Now, what should I do? Now I see the following. Well, S n f minus f c, if I convolve this one with this, 1. Okay. And there is S n f minus f c over here. This is cancelled. Minus j signal. But when you convolve this one by this one, you also here you have f minus f c. Okay. That is, I should have four terms at the end. S n f plus f c. Convolve this one with this one. One over two is already have taken care of. Okay, so I get this. Then convolve this one, whole thing, with this one. So I had one over here, minus because of this, but I have one more minus over here, plus, then signum f plus f c. Am I right? There should be, let me see, there is no j over here. You are definitely correct. One minus, because we have cancelled those j's. That is the end. Okay. Now, let's try to understand this and this part. So, how about this? Now, if f is greater than fc, what happens over here? f is greater than fc, then signum of this argument is f is greater than fc, it's 1. Okay. For example, I have 5 fc. fc is a positive quantity, obviously, so this becomes 0. So when f is smaller than fc, I get 2. Okay. When f is smaller than fc, this becomes minus 1. Okay. The argument becomes negative. Okay. Negative argument has signum of minus 1. one. Okay, I have this. So how about this one? So f greater than minus fc. Okay. F, so the 0 of this is at fc. So this on the other side, right side of that 0. So this becomes 2. And the other one, f smaller than minus fc. Okay. f smaller than minus, this becomes negative. I have 0. So interesting. So I'll be writing this. Then we will be thinking about this. When f is in between, I have Sn f minus fc. 
Okay. Plus, let me write this a little better. F minus FC plus SN F plus FC and zero other. Okay. Let's check. F smaller than FC, multiplication by two, this cancels. F minus FC, F smaller than FC. F greater than minus FC, I get the other term. Okay, again two, two cancels this. I have such a case. Again, this will be something very visual. So this kind of operation, we will see with an example. So this will be extremely easy. But in this calculation, I'm assuming that, well, it's assumed that, well, in the last step actually, this is exact, but let's say in this, let's say double star, in double star, it is assumed that, well, Fc is much, much greater than the bandwidth, okay, which is the case. Like, please remember our radio meta discussions and Sn of f is zero outside of bandwidth. Okay. It's, this is not a very critical comment, but I mean, it's good to know. So let's see, are we making a mistake? F minus Fc. With the help of Utkan, maybe, I'm, I'm, am I saying your name right? Utku. Utku. Um, maybe we don't have any mistakes anymore, but let's see. So this is F greater than Fc. F0, 1 plus. Okay. It seems to be correct. Okay. Now, I would like to do the same thing for the Fourier transform of this one. And then we will have an example. So, should I erase this part? But I don't want to erase that part. We can erase this part. I can redraw this. It's taking so much space. It's a very similar calculation, but let's do it together. Now, what should I do? Calculation of this, this time. Calculation of, oh, maybe I should, well, this is also equal to S and Q of F also equal to this because the autocorrelation is the same. Okay. N i and q they are the same. Calculation of S N I and Q, I'm dealing with this. This is called cross power spectral density of in phase and the quadrature phase components. So the same story. S N I and Q of F, which is the Fourier transform of Okay. How about this? Now we are more experienced. Oops. Do you agree? Multiplication property, convolution in the Fourier terms, Fourier domain. Okay. Minus Fourier transform of this. times, so this is the Fourier transform of R and hat. Am I making a mistake? It's the same thing over here. So I should convolve this, erase this, with the Fourier transform of cosine. So I have again 1 over, well, I don't like this j over here. So can I remove this j and put it over here? 
for the sake of my, you know, visual, um, let's say, easy, ease, ease of calculations and so on, because j moves to the numerator as minus j. So why am I doing this? Because now I can put everything in 1 over j2 brackets, which is good, times Sn f minus fc of, I have coefficient of 1, f minus fc, I have dealt with this. So minus signum f minus fc plus Sn. Now, I convolve these two. There's a bracket. F plus Fc, but with a minus sign. So I have minus 1 over here. How about this one? This one is F plus Fc with also minus sign. Do you agree? Let me check this. I have something like that. There is an outer bracket also. We make use of different brackets just to, so that we don't lose the track of things. Again, how about this? This one is equal to f greater than fc, 0. More experience in this. f smaller than fc. This is minus 1 plus 2. OK, am I right? How about this one? Well, how about doing this? I will be making this as minus, because I like positive numbers. Let me use this. OK. So this is equal to, now f greater than the 0 of this, minus fc. So f is on the right side of the 0 of this, let's say, polynomial. This is positive, 1 plus 1, 2. In the other case, this is negative. I have this. Okay. So what do I have? Again, our final result is 1 over j2. And I have Sn f minus fc minus Sn f plus fc. I will move this up. This is the nice thing about whiteboard. It's not easy to do this on even with pencil and paper, but with whiteboards it is easy. So what did we do? So this is, which one was this? 2 times fn minus fc. Maybe I should get rid of this 2 then. Okay. This one is 2 times minus fn plus fc. Cancel 2. And this is supposed to be valid when f is smaller than fc, this one, but greater than minus fc. If I satisfy these two conditions at the same time, then I have the addition of them. Okay. If I satisfy them at the same time. If I don't satisfy them at the same time, this is the command actually. That is the detail, but I mean minor detail. It will be zero other. Okay. So let's see, is this correct? 1 over j. OK, it's correct. So that is it. Now, if I have this one, how about the power spec, cross power spectral density of this? This is equal to, since they are negatives of each other, their Fourier transforms are also negatives of each other. I don't need to do anything else. OK. That is good. Now, I'll erase this part. We have made use of this very much. So without an example, we cannot understand this. So 
control. Let's see. So NT, Y sign stationary, then pass, process, with, I think, power spectral density, S, N of F. Okay. So let me sketch this. S, N of F. So I have this point as A, this is frequency, and I have this a bandwidth. Okay, so what's the question? Find, let me see, SNIF, SNQF. S N I N Q F. Okay. Well, press equivalence. Now, let's say that the carrier frequency is over. I should specify the carrier frequency, not the carrier, but I should say representation frequency, not to confuse you. But we are using them sometimes synonymously. Okay. So let's say that the midpoint is my, you know, for the sake of simplicity, it's selected as my representation frequency. This is, of course, it should be stated in the problem because it can be, as I have said, any frequency. Okay. It can be any number. So Fc is the value. Fc is marked on graph. So it's also given and marked on Sn of f information. Okay. Very good. So what should I do? Well, S and f N i of f. I should do such a thing. Okay. So let me do it then. So can you calculate this? <laughs> it becomes a very easy operation, I guess. S n f minus f c. F c is a positive quantity. Okay. So what should I do? So this is the point. Uh, you know, I get, just for clarity, this A over 2, okay, over here. So I should shift this to the right. Am I right? And then if I shift it to the right, so this becomes 0, A over 2. So I have over here the bandwidth. So this is this part. And of course, this one is also shifted but it is shifted to 2fc. Am I right? Over here. So at 2fc, it will be having this. a over 2. So I have, it, I have done this part. f minus fc. So shift this to the right by fc amount. That is it. Now, F plus FC, okay, so this time you shift it to the left. So then I have A over 2 over here, it's the same bandwidth. Let me have something like this. Okay, same bandwidth. But since this is shifted, now this is moved to minus 2 Fc, and I have this over here. Okay. That is it. Okay, so let's understand. So, before this step, this step requires this explanation, but this step does not require anything. This is exact equality, exact equality, and so on. S F minus F C, this figure, is multiplied by zero for all F greater than F C. So this part is totally killed. It's not present anymore. So you retain this part. Okay. Similarly, 
S F plus F C, this one. So F greater than minus F C. So there's minus F C over here. You keep this part, and then you add them. Okay, that is it. So this is the explanation of this remark actually. So I'm assuming that you know this bandwidth is small. So after this shift operations, it's not very large that it does not you know occupy this does that go over FC and so on. We have comments like that, but it's not very critical. At the end, since carrier frequency is much larger, I am focused on this. Now, what is the final step? I can erase this. So I should be let me also adding this one. But I should be a little careful. I'm interested in what is going on between minus FC and plus FC. Okay, because the other parts are totally nulled and so on. Then SNI of F which is also equal to S and Q of F. So if I call this my function number one, function number two, okay? So let me try to mark my functions. So this is one, let's say. So which one is one? This is in red, function number one. And this one is, this one is function number two. My FCs, for the sake of clarity, they are marked like this. Okay, this is the zero frequency. I have A over two over here, this level is A. Okay. So if I add one plus two, Function number one, function number two. My final result is actually flat. Well, the reasoning is very simple. If you are adding straight lines, you get a straight line. Okay. So how do you identify straight lines? Find two points on the straight line. Point number one, one plus A, this point. It's flat, obviously. Okay. That is it. So this is the end. So S N I N Q power spectral density of the in phase component and the quadrature phase component for this example, it turns out to be something like that. Now, how about this? S N I N Q of F. I should be also dealing with this. Look at this, and I and Q of F. So luckily, I have the same thing. Okay. So what the, at the end, what do you do? At the end, at the very beginning of this problem, you have this um, N of T by sun stationary process with power spectral density like that. There is a long story, but you can tell your little sister or brother that what you are going to do is move this to over here somehow, move this over there and add, okay? That becomes an incredibly easy operation to remember. So after do, you do that, you get the power spectral density of, you know, in-phase and quadrature phase components. How about the cross power spectral density? Well, this time you subtract them, okay? But there's also one over J factor. So let me, which color is this? So let me write this like, to get rid of this J, Okay, so or I should say if this is like this, so I should multiply this by J, okay? So if I multiply this by J, J times S, just J cancels, is equal to, which one was one? This one was one, I guess, one minus two this time. So let me sketch one one more time. Okay, 
then I have two like that. So this is my one. This is my minus two. Okay. So one means S and F minus F C related. I mean this related with that. Two means S and F C related. I'm talking about this one. So negative of this one should be you know, reaching minus A. So this one will be reaching plus A. These are A over two minus A over two and so on. Okay, so once I do that, what do I have? Well, I get zero over here if I add them. So I should get this point, this point. Okay. So this becomes y s n i n q of f times j. I mean, this is imaginary value times j. Okay. There is this j. So I don't want to deal with that j because I want to do something, a simple operation. So at the end, you may consider this. Now I'm taking this. Another branch. Plus, minus, and this is it. Okay? This is clear. Very simple. That is it. Well, this becomes that. So that is the end. Now, we are almost done. I will write maybe three comments or so. And this will be our final lecture. Well, let me write those comments. So I think this is very easy to remember because it is something very much visual. So we have positive and the negative frequency parts and we are separately, individually modulating them somehow towards the DC frequency and adding and subtracting them. At the end, I mean, that is what we do. Of course, the, all of these steps, I mean, they are not trivial. We have to do these calculations carefully, but the end result is very simple. Now, let's write some notes. By the way, these are very important for physical layer communication topics. You will see in some other courses. So let me write, if S n of f is symmetric around, let's say, f is equal to f naught, and the representation frequency f c is selected as f naught, then S n i n q of f is equal to zero. Okay. So what's going on? Now, if at the beginning I have something like this, f naught, but this is also equal to my f c. Do you see what I mean? So if I do this, S n i n q f, well, I get zero because I'll be modulating this over here, then modulating this over there, and then subtract. Okay, so so you get zero. Very interesting. So what's the meaning of this? Is equal to zero. That means that. Therefore, let me write it over here. Therefore, in this case, R n i n q of tau is equal to zero for all tau because it's inverse Fourier transform. Zero's inverse Fourier transform is zero function. I mean, what's what? A very simple relation, I guess. Okay. Interesting. Number two. If and t is a Gaussian, Gaussian information is new, band pass process, then n i and n q are jointly 
Gaussian processes. So why? So let's see. Why we have such a case? The reason is all operations are linear. All operations, like Hilbert transform is linear, shifting is linear, multiplication by a function is linear, everything is linear. All operations conducted to get Ni and Nq are linear operations. And important result, and Gaussianity is preserved under linear operations. Interesting. So if I know that the input process, okay, it has power speckle density like this. Power speckle density does not tell me about this, tell me anything about distributions. It is, as I have said, something about power spectral density, distribution of power across the spectrum, or inverse Fourier transform, autocorrelation. So these are moment-based descriptions. Autocorrelation is related to expectations. So density information is much stronger. But if it is Gaussian, then I know that, okay, I know this, let's say, um, power spectral density of Ni and Q flat over here. That means that I know the autocorrelation. So this corresponds to autocorrelation of a Gaussian process. Okay. That's very interesting. So we get lots of let's say, mileage from that kind of an information. So number three. is a band pass Gaussian process whose S n of f is symmetric around f is equal to f naught and carrier frequency fc not the carrier, but I should say representation. Representation frequency is selected as F naught. Then what happens? So this is actually node number one plus node number two is your third node. Okay. First node is this. Second node is this. Okay. So this is symmetric around F is equal to Gaussian symmetric around f is equal to f naught. So what happens? As f naught, I have this. Then, n i t and n q t are Gaussian independent and individually identically correlated processes. So, a little bit confusing looking, but I think it will be clear. So, what do I mean by this explanation? S and I and Q of F is equal to zero because of node number one. Meaning that, let's say cross correlation is equal to zero. Am I right? So, but that is also, we are actually both ways, okay? That is also by the definition of this n i of t n q of t minus tau is equal to zero. Okay. 
This is for all tau. So let me call this T1. Let me call this T2. So now this Gaussianity and I T1 is uncorrelated. Well, this is not Gaussianity right now. Uncorrelated with NQ T2 for all T1 and T2. For all, I couldn't write it. For all T1 and for all T2. Okay? Do you agree? I, I'm not doing anything. From power spectral density, cross correlation, definition of cross correlation, but these are zero mean. Maybe I should write zero mean over here. But we are always interested in, let me include zero mean. Okay? As we have said before, if I have a non-zero mean, it will be appearing in the power spectral density as an impulse. Okay. But we are not dealing with that. Okay. So they are uncorrelated. This random variable times this random variable. If you multiply them, x times y is equal to zero. Or, since they are zero mean, covariance of x and y is equal to zero, they are uncorrelated. Now we see that, okay, now Gaussianity. So since they are Gaussian, these are Gaussian, then Ni T1 is independent of NQ T2 for all T1 and T2. Okay, so this is our final result. So it says the following, we have explained what? Then Ni, NQ are Gaussian distributed, Gaussian independent. Okay, we have seen they are independent, they are Gaussian distributed. Okay. And it says individually, individually, identically correlated, let's say, correlated processes. So what do I mean by this? Now you see Ni and Q, those processes are independent, meaning that there is no statistical dependency in between them, which is good. I can think about them. They belong to very different worlds. Okay, there is nothing to, um, there is no information to extract from this one about this one. Okay, so also individually identically correlated processes. That means the following: R n i of tau is equal to R n q of tau. Again, I'm using sometimes capital R's, sometimes small R's. It doesn't matter in this course, okay? So why for all tau I have such a relation? Because, please remember, S and I of F was S and Q of F. Please remember our sketches. When we shift them, we have found only one of them. The other one is also equal to that. Okay, now one more comment. And then this is the end of this course. In many practical applications, the let's say engineer starts with the application with the assumption of an I of T and an Q of T being Gaussian. This is a reasonable assumption because of the central limit theorem. Okay? Because central limit theorem is the driving force. Central limit theorem says that if you have many individual effects, and if those effects are random, many, then you have something like a Gaussian distribution. Okay. Ni, Nq being Gaussian, and Ni of t is independent of in Q of T. We see that this assumption is valid in the case noted noted as note number three. Okay. So it should be 
representation frequency, so on, node number three. In, let's say, several applications, It is assumed that the bandpass process is something like white noise. Okay. That is, so you have, actually you have white noise, this like flat over here, overall spectrum. But you are only interested in, let me draw it better. So let's say you are focused on this spectrum. S N of F. So around the frequency F naught. Again bandwidth. Okay. So what did we say? In several applications, it's assumed that the bandpass process okay, is white noise, let's say, in the spectrum of interest, in the bandwidth, I think, in the bandwidth. So there is no variation over here, it's just flat, its level is A. So clearly, that is this, clearly any frequency in the bandwidth or the center frequency in the bandwidth. The clearly the center frequency in the bandwidth can be selected such that n i t and N, Q, T are independent as in node number three. Okay. So this is the final thing that I would like to say. So my message is only this. If you have a flat spectrum, actually in practice, this flat spectrum extends overall. Okay. Not only in this bandwidth, but it extends overall. So you can select actually any part of this operational bandwidth. And if you do this subtraction, you get zero. Again, this cross correlation of Ni and Nq will be equal to zero. Okay? Because it's like flat everywhere. If it is like flat everywhere and you are, just, you are doing this kind of a subtraction operation as for the calculation of the cross power spectral density, you get zero. So this is the thing. If you have white noise, at least in the operational bandwidth, if you select your representation frequency at the center of this, which makes sense, then this in-phase and the quadrature phase components will be uncorrelated. And furthermore, if they are uncorrelated and Gaussian, like in this case, they will be independent. So this leads to several simplifications because you can deal with in-phase components independent of the quadrature phase components and so on. So that's all I would like to say. So this is the end of our lectures. This is lecture number, end of lecture number 42. And these parts are very important for the physical layer communications. In some other courses, you will also see the discussion of you know, NI, NQ, in-phase and the quadrature phase components, especially in receiver designs and so on. Perhaps you'll be making note of these remarks at that time. Okay, I wish you best of luck with your finals.